Thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Wilson. And I'm Chris Emke. And this is Diesel Performance Podcast. Chris, we got a great show today. I'm excited yeah. to get into it. Want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Of course, Exergy Performance, always bringing us the actual absolute peak uh, reliability and peak performance out of our common rail Bosch injectors. Mm-hmm. WC Fab, your one-stop shop for anything Duramax, Cummins, and Power Stroke. They're getting into the Power Stroke stuff, but if you're looking to pretty up your engine bay, do some cool, you know, powder coating badges, traction bars, uh, brake reservoirs, or maybe you want to do a Kelderman lift that's powder coated, WC Fab can get you taken care of. Absolutely correct. And then, of course, Calibrated Power Duramax Tuner. Uh, that's where Chris and I spend each and every day. We love it over here. Uh, we have some really cool products in the pipeline. Oh, including 22 Cummins custom tuning going to be available very soon. So check in with Chris, find out more details about that. Now we can get you squared away on it. I feel like you know something about what I have to do after this recording. <laughs> um, and then XDP, your one shop, sh- one stop shop for anything diesel related, whether it's filters or fluids, up to you know performance aftermarket parts and everything in between. They can get you taken care of to service any of your diesel pickup truck needs. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, for today, uh, we are talking with Jeff from Kelderman. Jeff, how the hell are you? Oh, we're doing good, man. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're doing, doing great. Good. Yeah, no it complaints. is. It is finally. Weather's finally starting to break around us. We're here in northern Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Whereabouts yeah. are you? Well, I'm southeast Iowa, so uh, we kind of got the same climate. There oh, yeah. Go. Okay. There you, there you go. Yeah. Uh, now, as we start with all of our guests, I always want to know kind of what's your experience around diesel performance? And I guess for you, what's your experience around truck performance? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we've been doing kind of got introduced to the diesel trucks in 1990 you know when my dad bought a commons you know the one <laughs> kind of like everybody right the, the, you know the old g1 dodge kind of started it all yeah, that's how i so, got into uh, this yeah we've heard that i was gonna say we've heard that once or twice yeah yeah, yeah no you know that's what started kelderman air you know those trucks rode so bad and then uh, <laughs> you know but my really my first black smoke moment was you know my dad had a a 93 cummins that he had sent off and had worked over and dynoed you know and we got it back it was you know it was a 300 horsepower motor you know and this, this was coming off of when they were what one 180 190 yeah, you know yeah. with the intercooler and this was like 330 or something you know i remember him coming back and showing me this the dyno sheet and saying jump in let's go and it, it was the old get treg five speed and oh man you know he laid on it and you know all of a sudden it's like gee whiz, there's something under the hood on this thing. It was, it was a hot rod. <laughs> no, it's crazy, those old trucks, man. And you know, I think back, you know, I had a 90, and then I had a 92, a non-inter, or, you know, 90 was a non-intercooled, the 92 was an intercooled. And it yep. was crazy to think how how slow and lethargic those things really were out of the factory, right? And then y- you could do a couple simple things and pick up, you know, 800 horsepower. And, you know, that was like, you couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it playing around. And even now thinking about it, you know, now that that power isn't all that impressive. But nonetheless, from what they have to what you could do, you know, with a, a screw and, and a grinder on yeah. those old VE pumps, you know, those things are pretty cool. Well, you know, you guys are noting the, the low, low, total horsepower number but you got to remember that power to weight r- ratio as well i mean some of these yeah. trucks they yeah. were much lighter than what today's trucks okay. are so <laughs> so you're shaving off quite a bit of weight uh so to have 300 horsepower on something like that still a lot of fun rocket on the street ship. yeah, yeah. rocket ship yeah. for sure all right uh so jeff you, you got started messing around with your dad's trucks then where did you go from there with your with your career in trucks well so you know dad started you know the 1990s so that's when i graduated high school and I was to Iowa State University, started engineering, and then ended up one, one, one semester of some hardcore calc and uh, uh, physics and chemistry. And I decided, you know what, I, I kind of for what I see myself doing in the future, I probably don't need need this this much uh, engineering training. Um, so I ended up just kind of didn't really have a major for a couple of years and then, then decided business marketing is probably going to be my best bet for where our company needs to go. So, you know, the air rides were being built and stuff. I was in college. I'd come back and work in the summer and do some welding and all that stuff. Um, mostly, though, still knew that I was going to actually run the business. So the management and the marketing was going to be, you know, in our, in our best interest for me to, you know, get a little training in that. Um, meanwhile, coming back from school, started full-time running the business in 95. 
you know, really, it was still more ag dominated on dad's end of stuff than it was the truck stuff. I and mean, we were still doing the air suspension, but it's primarily RVs, uh, towers, guys like that. Um, but then, uh, then in the early 2000s, you know, the, the lifted trucks started coming on more and more and more. And, uh, you know, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'm not afraid to say, I'll, I'll always tell you, that, I mean, the guy that told me to get into building air ride lifted suspension was Michael Clausen at Bully Dog. He's the one who said, Jeff, you need to, you got a niche market here. These big trucks are going to come popular. You got to figure out how to do air rides, man. You got to do air rides with kids. That's and, so cool. Uh, and so, you know, I, I listened to him and, you know, played around a little bit with my G2 Dodge. But really when in 90, October of 2002, I got a 3500 Ram that uh, ended up being, you know, known in the industry as Big Red. You know, the first mega cab, uh, first you know, air ride lift kit, you know, five inch. Then we grew up to 10 inch and, you know, that, that truck was on the cover, like seven magazines during its duration. So <laughs> that's, that's when we really started getting into the lifted stuff. Um, you know, and, and, and as the lifted stuff goes, you know, you also got, you know, I sell three stock heights in every lifted truck. So, um, that, that's when the business really, really started, started moving and shaking on the, on the, on the air ride full four length front and rear systems, uh, early 2000s. That's so interesting because that is like right as like diesel started to get really cool too, right? Is like it like kind of timed itself really well with that, uh, where common rails hitting the scene. Guys are starting to lift their trucks. Uh, you, yep. you know, you actually had something that you could daily drive and be three four four hundred horsepower, pretty reliably, pretty easy. Uh, and then you could put the rest of the money into your lift. It's funny now because Chris, most of the time when we see a big lifted truck, we call it a mall crawler. <laughs> you, yes, <laughs> you, you. <laughs> You. I don't think that term's even in my vocabulary. Uh, okay. At any rate, uh, but but we do. We we see a lot of guys lift their trucks because because they'd rather they have a passion for making it look really cool. Yeah. Uh, if you've been to SEMA and you see the trucks at SEMA, you're hard pressed to find a diesel powered pickup truck at SEMA that's not on a huge right. giant lift. Yeah, there. I mean, it's uh, you got your different levels of that too. You know, yes, you get a SEMA. And, you know, we all know you go to SEMA, and, and the only, it seems like the only other time you see that any of those trucks at SEMA is going to be at, at, at the Florida Truck Show or um, down at uh, down at the, uh, you know, the big show in Conroe. And you get your specific tow truck or l- larger trucks, you know, lifted on, on the scene. Um, most of my guys, though, believe it or not, you know, my, our most popular lifts are 5 to 6, not 450. Um, majority of my guys are business owners and construction guys. And these guys, these guys live in their trucks, yep. so they want, they kind of want something half it way in between. They want something, uh, you know, that really makes a statement, but something that they can still pull the Bobcat to the job site, or they can still pull a race car trailer, you know, to the track at the weekend. But you know, my guys that that come and ship their trucks here, they, they want the high end. They kind of want the best of the best, so to speak. And um, they're sending limiteds. They're sending platinums. And uh, they're 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 spending some dough, you know. They're doing the color match bumpers. They're doing the full suspension setups, and it's uh it's it's a it's a great thing. I mean, I got you can order a Dodge or a Ford and have it drop shipped to my place from your from a dealership anywhere in the United States. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, when you were getting into the suspension stuff, you know, you you kind of just walked it through the timeline, the mid '90s, and then the early part of 2000s. When I think of lift kits, I mean, Kelderman is one of the more elites right like it's it's not your you know skyjacker lift or you know any of the other lift kits that are really out there so did you think that you were going to be a, like a, a premium lift type company and that it was going to be you know the lift kit that's going to be on these premiums and these platinums and have all the powder coated ass uh accents uh, accents to go with it did you really have that vision in mind for the business early on uh, actually i did um i i I, I, my goal on this was somebody, you know, high end. Somebody's got to create that, create the high end. I, my, I modeled it after, you know, you got Shelby Mustangs, you got Roush Mustangs, you know, back in the eighties and nineties, you had Saline Mustangs. I mean, I wanted, I wanted to be that high end. I wanted to create a brand. Um, I, I wanted, I wanted my goal even back then was when you hear of Petty Garage Mustang, a brand that was had some affiliation with something like that. And it was, a, I had an agricultural world. My dad was always really well known as an innovator. Uh, you know, we had the Kelderman corn reel, you had the Kelderman fold kits for 
corn plants, you had Kelderman uh, marker systems, you had Kelderman hay rakes. It was always known as a high quality, a high, higher end brand. And, you know, so ma- making, making high end, high quality stuff has always been our, our goal. So um, when we started making this, you're doing air ride suspension. You know, all, the, all these other brands have their place, and there's a lot of great companies out there. But when you start taking something that's going to be air ride suspension, a four link on the front, a four link on the rear, an air management system, you're already putting yourself three times, four times over an MSRP of a, uh, a leaf spring kit that is just one of those things like, well, we're going to create our own high end stuff because there's nothing else out there like it. Okay. That's awesome. I think we hear that quite often from craftsmen, right, Chris? I think that's something that we've heard from other guys of like, well, nobody really had what I wanted. Right. So I went out and I made it. Uh, what makes what makes your, your brand high end? Uh, if we took all the marketing and the media away and all of the awesome builds we've seen at SEMA and PRI and all the other shows we go to, what really makes Kelderman unique? Well, it's going to be, um, it's going to be the, the function of it. Everything I... Everything we're building, I wanted it to be um, function. I mean, if it's a one-ton truck, I want to build an air suspension that's going to be rated for a, a 450 size truck. Okay, so everything I want to build is going to be built stronger than what you're putting it on. And I, and I, for example, you see a Range Rover. You know, you'll see the how many people are actually using a Range Rover for what they claim it's supposed to be able to do. You know, <laughs> nobody, but. But I want to be able to say, I got a 450, just because I got puts a three inch or a six inch or even a 10 inch lift, this thing still has to be able to safely and reliably pull the, the maximum GVW. I, I'm not putting on coilovers that when you put your, tr- your truck on, the back end is going to sag eight inches. I want to keep the truck level. Our joke around here is we, we, we say we don't do squat around here because, you know, <laughs> we don't. That's not, that's not what we're here to do. We put loads on the truck. Diesel trucks are supposed to carry a lot of weight. I'm never going to build anything that's going to decrease its load carrying capacity, we're, we're, even if it's on 42-inch tires. One of the things that I, I noted myself was, um, you're, you're familiar with Jason Worley at WC Fab, of course. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had the luxury of taking <laughs> several of Jason's trucks cross country. <laughs> um, anytime he does any of his trucks, you know, his personal truck, it's a crew cab long bed. It's got to be the red color, of course. And it always yep. has a Kelderman lift. And uh, the one thing I would say I noted is the drive, the ride quality. Okay, so to Jeff's point, That's right? A real big one. No squatting, right? So I get that. And we've had gooseneck trailers in the rear with trucks, and there was no squat. But the quality of the ride is is something that you're getting what you pay for in that sense. How many times internally, Paul, do we you know make comments about lifted trucks that come in and out of here because they drive poorly? Like they do not drive well. They don't have the best ride quality. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's something as I'm thinking about what kind of separates, uh, you know, some of the lift kits and I know nothing about lift kits. I'm not into lifted trucks myself. That's just personal preference. Um, I noticed that the trucks are a lot more nimble and they, they actually drive nice. Well, just on this show, we've driven trucks with and without Kelderman yeah. lifts and talked about exactly this yeah. topic, Chris, about, a, you, you know, you get out and I don't know how common it is. I, I guess my anecdotal experience of like, Almost all the the big lifted trucks I've been in dragged one side of the road or the other. Yeah. Um, that drives me nuts. What causes that, Jeff? Well, a lot of that, you know, the well, it's going to be the ability to correctly align something, and that's where all my stuff being four link suspension. I can I I've got trailing arms on all four corners, so I can put the axle where it needs to be. I can get my you know caster and camera set exactly where it needs to be so you get because you want to you want a neutral ride you know we got pull and you got drift you know what i mean it, you, you get i don't hold on walk, tires. Walk, walk me what, what's the difference between pull and drift okay well you know, a pull is you let off steering wheel and, and and it that sucker's pulling into the ditch or into oncoming traffic okay okay that's scary uh, yeah yeah which people will adjust with shims and and wedges and this and that so a drift would be you take your hand off the wheel and it takes eight or ten or twelve seconds to slowly merge toward the ditch you know what i mean all right all and, right and, and so you know you, the the having the four link allows you to quickly adjustment and, and get this thing to, to drive straight. Um, what happens is you find that you know you get bigger tires, 
you know, you got 42 inch tire. If you measure all eight, you know, all the way around the circumference, a lot of times you have tire a tiny bit smaller or a little bit bigger. That stuff will affect how it pulls side to side. Um, you know, we just got a lot more adjustability and, and that's something that we've really tried to take pride in is, is getting trucks to drive straight down the road. And again, when we were doing all this stuff, you know, when we were, put, you know, taking the G3 Rams, putting a, t- a you know, a 10 inch lift on it. I mean, that was, you know, that, that was massive in 2003. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, being able to take a look at where the progression of trucks are going. I mean, it is something, Chris. I think there's a local guy I saw over in Marengo the other day with a giant lift, and it made me wonder. It really did make me think, like, where where do lifts go from here? You know, how much taller are we going to get in tires and trucks? Yeah. I The question that I always have is, Jeff, you've been doing this as long as you have. I, I've had the luxury. I've been under a, a first gen, a second gen, a third gen, a fourth gen, and a fifth gen truck what's the R&D process look like and how much more difficult have things become when trying to create these kits on these newer trucks? Because I'm going to assume that the growth of the business and where you see that potential um, increase in, in, in what you do sales-wise, that, that's from new platforms. I know like for us at Calibrated, it's the new yeah. platforms that drive the business. Right. Well, and when you guys called and I didn't answer a while ago, it's because literally I was on my back underneath our 2023 F450. <laughs> with, with a tape measure with, with a couple of my guys trying to figure out where are we going to mount controls on this thing? I mean, the the death system on this new one is literally but damn near five feet long. Yep. And there's just, you know, it's that's the biggest challenge we have is with room. Now, you know, because I'm uh, a stock height stuff, you know, we'll just, you know, I know we're talking lifted, but we, we always start with, st- we start with stock height. And, and that's, you know, one of my most popular kits because you got all these RVers that don't want to, you know, uh, you know, they want a smooth ride when they're traveling. They want to travel in comfort. So we start with our stock height stuff. Well, don't really want to pull that spare tire out unless we have to. So we're trying to figure out how we can make a smaller compressor box, smaller tanks, maybe longer tanks, whatever, air tanks. So we can make this work. You know, then we'll bump up to, you know, our five to six inch kit. Well, you're going to go 37 inch tires on 22 or 24 inch wheels you know then we don't have a spare tire no big deal we slap our 3h system under there uh we got plenty of room for tanks and and whatnot you know you get up into a 10 to 12 inch kit you know you got your 40 inch 42 inch tires you know again not bringing a spare so i got room for the controls as far as where it's going you know i don't really we we kind of stopped at the the 10 to 12 inch kit decided that is that's the tallest kit i plan on doing um, that I can safely feel like I can use current Pitman arms, current hydraulics assist steering, stuff that I feel confident enough that we can sell to guys that are going to drive these things every day and pull trailers. Again, my biggest thing is function. I want got an F-250. I want these guys to be able to pull a race car trailer to the track or construction trailer or Bobcat, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm always about, we're working here. We're decent truck guys. I got I got trailers and everything I'm going to build. I'm going to make sure I can pull my trailer to where it needs to go. Um, you know, you got stability control stuff now. You got, you know, you're, you got your lane assist stuff going. You start lifting that stuff up. Yeah, I mean, we 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 do a lot of testing with our sensors on our bumpers. You know, you got your you got your you know the the adaptive cruise control. You know, you put new bumpers on these things. You got to take your adaptive cruise control. You got to move that, change the location. It's uh, it's 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 nothing like it was 15 years ago. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I was thinking too, like you'll have like the grade assist where it tells you how big of a grade you're going and stuff like that too. You start lifting up the trucks. That all well, has to play a role. The, the thing that besides grade assist, the lane assist is about the biggest challenge you got now. Okay. I mean, even with stock type stuff, you know. So so we do a ton of Ram 5500s. And a lot of them are on Dynamax chassis, you know, so you got to, you know, you got your, your motor home, you know, it might be a, th- you know, 28, 30 footer. And then it's got this factory lane assist and these things, you know, if you let off the steering wheel and it wants to pull a little bit, you know, like if you fall asleep, you know, oh, it's going to catch, catch the, catch the center lane. It's going to turn you the other direction. Well, you, you start turning yourself in a, in a vehicle that long, you know, it, some of this stuff becomes even more you know counterproductive and when it's trying to trying to you know accomplish here you start getting vehicles that are 
ill handling. Um, and then, you know, they, you know, to me, you know, if I own all that stuff, I turn all that stuff off, but gosh, dang, it makes it challenging when you're trying to play with suspension and you got, you got a steering that's got its own <laughs> motor. That's going to start turning on its own, you know, then, then you, you know, then you start to do these dodges, of, you know, you got all this lane assist, then you, you know, you lift this thing up and then you, then you have to straighten out the steering wheel. Okay. And then you're trying to get the if the steering wheels off a certain amount um it starts messing with the computer and then it um starts throwing codes and it, it's uh there, there, there's every time there's a new model year you find a, a bunch of bugs that that may not have been there in a year or two before that that's so that. wild it's funny because we we play with you know what we do for a living we play on the calibration side of things and you know turbo manufacturing stuff like that and we deal with that same type of stuff, but I didn't think that we would run into that same type of stuff on the suspension side. So as you're talking about, you know, the different things that you've, you know, kind of encountered, we deal with the same stuff, but on the opposite end of the spectrum. So yeah. it's just, it's odd that, you know, it makes sense. I should have assumed, but I didn't. So. Yeah. And then you got, you know, you also got your ABS and you're going bigger tires and wheels. And then, so you, and then you um, also uh, run into some issues when you do some speedometer calibration too. Of course. Um, then you got, uh, and I keep picking on Dodges because they're just, it's just some, they just seem to have some weird, weird stuff going on. But, you know, you get, you get 42 inch tall tires um, on these trucks, and then you start to uh, change the speedometer calibration. And some of this stuff starts to play with uh, some of the GPS speeds. Um, and, and, and it just, it's, there's some weird stuff that goes on, man. I, I'm not going to lie. You know, and, you know, and a lot of stuff you don't know. And, you know, you can drive it around here and do a test drive, put 300 miles on it for a truck, everything. You get it off, and the customer calls you a week later after a couple thousand miles. He's like, I think he's doing some weird stuff. And then, you know, you, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, okay. Um, you know, then you just, you just, you just work through it, work with them. Some guys are pretty good to work with. Other guys, you're like, okay, make sure this guy doesn't get uh, another, another kit. So, <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, you know, the, you know the game. You just yeah. some some of this new new model years. There, the, it'll th it'll throw you through some curveballs, and you don't know until you get some miles. You get just real world stuff, and yeah. you know we can test and try and do all kinds of stuff. But you know, there's there's always things that come up, um, and that's just that's just part of R and D and and working with the customer and treating them right, and uh, you know, trying to trying to continuously make make your product better you know, year after year and model, you know, make a model after make a model. That's awesome. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the situation that, that all good manufacturers find themselves in people who work on new model stuff. Uh, they get, you know, weighted with that R and D process. Uh, as we start to look at the future, what, where, where do you go from here with Kelderman? Uh, you guys have a great name. You have a great reputation. You seem to be really on top of the market uh, as far as what you guys provide. What does, what does next year look like for you? What does five years look like for you? Well, yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. I guess I guess I guess some semi front suspension. We're we're prototyping right now. So uh, going after Ooh. some big rig stuff, um, you know, not really chasing the, you know, it, 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 I'm, I'm again, like everything else, work, ride quality is number one. The ability to be able to dump it a little bit is going to be going to be cool. But, you know, same deal. I got a bunch of buddies around here that bought some kits and, you know, and the steering geometry's off and they're going over bridges and I'm looking at the steering wheel and I'm like, that it really didn't move that much, did it? He's like, oh yeah, man, I go over the, you know, it's just you just look at stuff and you're like, so you got a 53 foot trail behind here, and every time you hit a bridge, uh, the steering wheel's moving, you know, 15 degrees on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, there's there's room for improvement on this line, so um, it's uh, we got some cool stuff coming out uh, on that uh, front. And um, obviously, with the new the new twenty three Fords, are going to keep us busy for a little while. We we got other frame files, and uh, we got our, our front bumpers uh, tacked up. They're 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 good to go. And uh, we're test fitting the four fifty right now. They've changed a bunch of holes, and you know, eighty percent of the kit's same, but no stuff just a thing, but different. So we're we're fitting that up actually today and tomorrow. So I got a few kits I need to get shipped. So we're working on that. So we're just going to continue. 
uh, to monitor, you know, as, as far as the, uh, you know, the green energy and all that stuff, I, I don't know. I'm hoping that we're just kind of riding the, uh, 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 pot, you know, the fad of the day. Um, you know, we all know you can't, you can't just turn everything over to electricity overnight like they think they're going to. There's, there's no infrastructure for it. You know, someday, you know, 20 years from now, yeah, probably all, everybody's going to have all kinds of stuff. But that doesn't mean my, my garage full of muscle cars isn't going to. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have some gasoline stashed somewhere. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, I'd imagine even once people go, say it is 20, 50, 100 years from now, people go electric. They're still gonna want to lift their truck. Oh yeah. They're yeah, still gonna want, yeah, want yeah, different got, suspension. Little, like you know how it goes. Yeah, I got. I get a little. I get a little off track there, but but yes, I agree 100. Um, you know, the, the, obviously electric's got some um, incredible advantage with, with torque curves. I mean, you know, I mean big big mining trucks, you know, or, or you know, using electric motors and all that stuff. So there's definitely some advantages to it. Um, you know, I just don't think it should be shoved down everybody's face. You know, you're going to do this. You know, that doesn't fly with you know too many you know patriotic Americans. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you. I know Chris um, yeah. disagrees with us, but I'm on your side, Jeff. I'm 100. <laughs> percent I, uh, I can't believe this guy's allowed in the building anymore. Wow. Um, <laughs> Chris has been too quiet for this episode, so we got to get him some pop shots. Make sure he's awake over there, Jeff. Uh, we love what you guys are doing. We love your guys' products. If our listeners want to follow along and along and learn more about you, where should they go? Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our website is Kelderman.com. You know, Instagram's Kelderman Trucks. Uh, we're doing some YouTube stuff, um, uh, you know, we, with 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 a lot of our builds, and we're we're actually coming out with we're gonna we're gonna try to get three or four actual, you know, programs out this year with you know builds with some with some pretty cool people. We're doing a deal with Aaron Lewis right now, and you guys love this. He's got a 90s, 97 F three fifty four door long box okay. on thirty eight. That's oh, wow. his daily driver. So. We've got that in here right now, so I'm I'm adapting a, a 99 to 04 kit to fit his uh, old body style. So we're building that right now, nice. and that's going to be a program we're doing with him. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's and awesome. uh, you know, yeah, we're just do just do a handful of cool shows with with some uh, some of the cooler you know customers we run across. Um, you know, some some uh, interesting individuals, characters, you know. Stuff to make you laugh and smile and say, you know, this is this is fun stuff. I like this stuff. <laughs> I love it. Well, hey, we're excited to see that. I know Chris and I will be following along. Listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again soon. I'm with you. I know Chris um, you know, disagrees with us, but I'm on your side, Jeff. I'm 100%. <laughs> I, uh, I can't believe this guy's allowed in the building anymore. Wow.